Last Sunday, you might recall, we celebrated the Feast of Divine Mercy. And on that day, we heard St. John's account of the first and the second appearance, which our Lord made to the apostles after he rose from the dead. In that account, St. John tells us that when our Lord first appeared to the apostles on Easter Sunday night, one of the twelve, namely Thomas, was not present in the upper room with the others. And even after Thomas returned, and after the others told him that the risen Lord had come to them, Thomas stubbornly insisted that he would never believe until he himself could touch the nail marks in Jesus' hands and put his own hand into the wound in our Lord's side. One week later, St. John says, our Lord appeared to the apostles once more, and this time, as you know, Thomas was present. Right away, the risen Lord invited Thomas to come forward and to touch him, to place his fingers in the nail marks in his hands and to put his hand into the wound in his side. And our Lord said to Thomas, be no longer unbelieve, unbelieving, Thomas, but believe. Now, as we reflect upon that encounter between Thomas and the risen Christ, we might be tempted to think that, in a way, our Lord Jesus was being rather hard on Thomas, that he was trying to embarrass him or humiliate him in front of the others. But in truth, our Lord was showing great mercy to Thomas, and he was teaching Thomas on that day, and through him, also teaching us the necessity of having faith and trust in God at all times. And when Thomas saw the risen Lord, he got that message loud and clear. In fact, Thomas fell before our Lord and made the most explicit act of faith in Jesus that we find in the entire New Testament when he said to him, My Lord, and my God. From that time on, Thomas would never doubt the Lord again. From that time on, he would boldly witness to Christ. And at the end of his days, his ministry as an apostle took him all the way far off in the east to India, where he preached the Lord there and willingly gave up his life for Christ. Today, on this third Sunday of Easter, we have another striking example of the powerful working of God's mercy in the life of another apostle. Today, in our first reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, we hear the powerful preaching of the apostle Simon Peter, who in the days after Pentecost, after the Spirit had come, risked his very life to proclaim his faith in the risen Lord. In fact, Peter, as we just heard in that passage, would preach to the people of Jerusalem what might go down in history as the most politically incorrect proclamation or speech in all of history. Peter says, you handed Jesus over to Pilate, thereby denying the holy and righteous one of God. You put to death the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And so repent and be converted so that your sins might be wiped away. Those are very powerful words. Bear in mind, by this time, Peter had already been arrested once by the Sanhedrin, the same group that had condemned Jesus. He had been flogged for speaking in this way. He had also been warned that if he continued on this path, he would suffer death. What a difference we see in the Apostle Peter after our Lord rose, after he received the gift of the Holy Spirit on the Jewish Feast of Pentecost, in contrast to the fearful kind of man he was before. No doubt our minds go back to that awful night in the Garden of Gethsemane 
when our Jesus, when our Lord was arrested. At the, on that night, to his credit, Peter had tried to defend Jesus, although he did it in the wrong way with a sword. Even when our Lord told him to put his sword away, however, Peter, unlike the other apostles, all except John, who ran away, Peter courageously followed our Lord into the courtyard of the high priest when he was bound in chains and taken there to be tried. But when one of the servants of the high priest identified Peter as a follower of Jesus, just as our Lord had predicted hours before at the Last Supper, Peter three times denied that he even knew the Lord. He did so with oaths and curses. It was a terrible act of betrayal, and Peter immediately regretted it, especially when the Lord looked upon him, the gospel says. He looked at Peter in the eye in that moment. It was an act of betrayal, but one that was committed out of weakness and fear. And the gospel says Peter went out and he wept bitterly. Unfortunately, we've all been in that place, haven't we? There have been times in our own lives, whether out of weakness or out of fear, we have betrayed our friendship with Jesus and even denied him before others. I know I've done so many times in my own life. And yet God is merciful, and he did not abandon Peter, nor did he leave him hopeless or in despair. In fact, John says that after our Lord rose from the dead, Jesus deliberately sought out Simon Peter on a day when he was fishing in the lake with the other apostles. Jesus was on the shore and he called Peter to come to him. He drew him aside. And three times he asked him this question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? The gospel says that Peter was hurt because our Lord asked him three times. He knew that he was referring to what had happened in the high priest's courtyard. And yet our Lord affirmed Peter in the strongest possible way when he told him that he had been chosen for a special mission to lead the other apostles, to strengthen them in faith, and to shepherd the newborn church. Yes, our God is merciful. And while he holds us accountable for our sins, he also gives us every opportunity to repent and turn back to him. Again, we see the mercy of Jesus in the life of an apostle. You know, in this context, there's a proverb of St. Augustine that comes to mind. Augustine says there is a love of self which leads to contempt for God. But then there's also a love of God which leads to contempt of oneself. Let me repeat that. There's a love of self that leads to contempt for God. But there is a love of God which leads to contempt for oneself. What Augustine is saying there is this. As weak and sinful human persons, we can become so self-absorbed, so concerned about ourselves, our safety, our comfort, our security, our reputation, what others think of us, what others can do for us, that we fail to love God in the way that he deserves to be loved. And of course, the Lord tells us how to love him, to love him above all other persons and things, with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. And when we fail to, God, to love God in that way, when we put ourselves before him, how easy it is to betray the Lord or deny him before others. For example, someone says something utterly untrue about our faith or mocks the church or mocks the Lord God himself or blasphemes in our presence. And we stand there silent and still, afraid of what others might say, 
if we defended our faith or if we offered a word of correction or if we simply walked away. And yet with the grace of God, this process can be reversed. As we come to know the Lord Jesus more intimately, as we follow him more faithfully, pray to him more consistently, we begin little by little at first to forget about ourselves and what others may think of us. And we do put God first in our lives. This is what happened to Thomas and Peter after our Lord Jesus rose from the dead, after he breathed upon them and gave them the Spirit of God. Today we pray with those two apostles, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, I trust in you.